All right, students, let's get started. Today we are covering the anatomy of the scapula. Okay, so first, we should be able to see this is the anterior view and posterior view. Now, how do I know if this is the left side scapula or the right sided scapula? Okay, and after this presentation, you should be able to identify which scapula it is left or right. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into this. The first thing we're going to discuss is the glenoid cavity, which sits right here. Now it is also right here, but you can't see it very well because this is the posterior view. And what the glenoid cavity does is it is where the head of the humerus attaches to the scapula. And so the uh, muscles that originate on the scapula insert onto the head of the humerus and by doing that, when they contract, they pull on the head of the humerus and do actions such as abduction, lateral rotation, medial rotation, adduction, stuff like that that we will cover in another video. For now, just know this is the glenoid cavity. Now, you should see supraglenoid and infraglenoid. So supra, you can think above, supraglenoid tubercle, and infraglenoid tubercle, okay? And these are gonna be some of the sites where some of the arm muscles originate, okay? And we will discuss those in other videos as well. For now, this is the glenoid cavity. Next, we have the spine of the scapula, okay? So here it is, is the spine of the scapula. Now, when we are massaging our clients, we should be able to feel and palpate the client's spine of their scapula. We know that this is the posterior view because we can actually feel this right here as we palpate our clients. So we should be able to understand now, okay, is this the right or the left scapula? So since this is on my client's back and the glenoid cavity is right here, that means the head of the humerus is going to be here, right? So if the head of the humerus is here and the humerus is right here, that means that this is the right arm because this is the posterior view this is the right arm right here so this is the right sided scapula since this is the anterior view this is also the right arm because the head of the humerus and the humerus would be right here next we have the acromion the spine of the scapula goes all the way up to the acromion we can palpate this on ourselves as well and our clients next we have the corcoid process that is this thing that sticks out right here now I've had my students say that they call this uh, the witch's finger because it looks like a little finger and so they call her Cora so if that helps you remember coracoid process use it okay that is the coracoid process next we have the superior angle of the scapula and we have the inferior angle of the scapula now these are also areas on the scapula that we can palpate and feel. I've had students tell me, Mr. Reyes, why is it, um, why is there this clicking as I massage right here? And so I go and I investigate and I actually realize that what the student is doing is as they're massaging, they're rubbing over the superior angle of the scapula and the tissue and it's causing kind of like a clicking noise. And so we have to be very careful and that's why it's very important that we understand the anatomy of the body because as we're massaging, we need to know, is this a knot or is this just a bone? Okay, so be very, very careful of the superior angle of the scapula because it can be just a bone and not a knot, okay? And if we're rubbing the tissue on there too hard, we can actually hurt our client more than make them feel better. Okay, so just be very careful. This is a superior angle and the inferior angle of the scapula. All right, next we have the superior notch. This is this notch right here on the top of the scapula. Now we have medial border and the lateral border. Lateral to the side, medial more towards the midline. Now, also another word that they use for the medial border is the vertebral border. So this is the, remember we said this was the right side, posterior view. So the vertebrae is gonna run right down the middle. And so since it's closer to the vertebrae, it is known as the vertebral border. Now the lateral border 
is also known as the axillary border because it is closer to the axilla, which is our armpit. So make sure you know both of these words because the inblex can ask you either or. So make sure you know medial border is also vertebral border and lateral border is also axillary border. Lastly, we have the supraspinous fossa. This is where the supraspinatus originates in this fossa. So you may be asking, what is a fossa? Okay, well, a fossa is just a shallow depression on the surface of a bone. And so the muscle originates right in here, and then it inserts on the head of the humerus at the greater tubercle. Now, underneath, we have the infraspinous fossa, where the infraspinatus originates. And then it inserts on the greater tubercle of the humerus. And then the lateral border is where the teres minor originates and also inserts onto the greater tubercle as well. So make sure you know supraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa. Over here on the anterior view, we have the subscapular fossa, and this is where the subscapularis originates, and then it inserts on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. So make sure you know those. And lastly, I really like this quote. I read it the other day in a book. I thought I would share it. So it says, your net worth to the world is usually determined by what remains after your bad habits are subtracted <clears throat> from your good ones. And it is by Benjamin Franklin. So I'm going to give you an example. For instance, say you're a procrastinator. You know, we all have done it. Now that's a bad habit. Most of us would, would agree that it would, that's a bad habit. So our net worth to the world, our purpose, our mission here is diminished by us procrastinating, okay? Because it's gonna make us take longer. For instance, say we don't, we go into uh, one of our tests in massage school and we fail it because we didn't take the time to study like we said we would. So if you're having trouble studying or committing to studying, make sure that you make a plan. So for instance, say you say, I'm gonna get off work tonight and I'm going to study. Well, if you know you're gonna be tired by the time you get off of work because you gotta go home, feed the kids, feed the animals, take a shower, do some laundry, well then don't commit, don't make a commitment like that. Instead, say, you know what? I'm going to get home, I'm gonna feed the kids, feed the animals, take a shower, and I'm gonna to go to bed early. And then I'm gonna get up earlier, and then I'm gonna take 30 minutes to study my notes before the exam on such and such day. So just be very, very careful of your bad habits. Try and take those bad habits out and eliminate them and make good ones so that you are better able to bring your full worth to the world. So hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, as always, do not hesitate to reach out to me in the comments. My email is in my About Me section in my YouTube channel. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up share and subscribe that way i can help others better prepare themselves for the emblex y'all have a wonderful week and i will see y'all in the next video